In October 2011, Christian apologist William Lane Craig had a debate with atheist philosopher Stephen Law on the topic Does God Exist? This video aims to expose Craig's misrepresentations of Law's views both during and after the debate. In the debate, Craig presented a cumulative case for a classic theist god that, by definition, has to be all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-good. This cumulative case consisted in the Kalam cosmological argument, the moral argument, and the case for the resurrection of Jesus. Stephen Law decided to not engage the Kalam, he just wished to prove, through the problem of evil, that a theist god does not exist, and the Kalam doesn't prove on its own the existence of a theist god, but only of a personal creator of the universe. Such creator need not be omniscient, omnipotent and all-good, which, as I said, are intrinsic characteristics of a theist god. It follows that even if the Kalam were successful, that would not have been enough on its own to prove a theist god, and hence Craig would not have won the debate topic. In addition, the Kalam is not a counter to the problem of evil. That's the challenge I'm putting before Professor Craig tonight, to explain why belief in a good god is on the basis of the available evidence and arguments not just a bit more reasonable than belief in an evil god but very significantly more reasonable than belief in an evil god. How might Professor Craig respond to this challenge? Well he's given his arguments for his particular god of course, I'll examine those ne next, though notice that the first one was completely neutral on god's moral properties so it provides no support for a, a good god over an evil god. In fact Dr Craig is now down to two arguments. <clears throat> In response to Law's strategy, Craig said this. First, he has not responded to my argument based on the origin of the universe. At best, he would have to say, well, we don't know if this being is good who has created the world. And I grant that. You can't know that from this argument. But it is a strange form of atheism, one not worth the name, that admits that there is a beginningless, uncaused, spaceless, timeless, immaterial, enormously powerful, personal creator of the universe. That, I don't think, deserves to be called atheism. So my first argument, based on the origin of the universe, has gone unrefuted. Therefore, we can all agree tonight that there is an immaterial, uncaused, beginningless, spaceless, timeless, enormously powerful, personal creator of the universe who may or may not be good. That would be a very strange form of atheism. Craig affirms that the law agrees that the universe originated by a personal creator. However, law has not considered that. He's just ignored the Kalam without making any statement about its truthfulness or otherwise. Craig's assertions didn't go unnoticed by law, and the two discussed about them during the post-debate conversation. Yeah, well, Bill tried that too, didn't he? The, the uh, oh, you're just conceding that there's a, a neutral God. No, of course I wasn't conceding that. Um, I came here to, to talk about Professor Craig's God um, rather than some, say, morally neutral God or multiple gods. There are all sorts of God hypotheses we might consider and indeed other hypotheses as to why the universe exists. Um, I'm uh, interested in cosmological arguments and fine-tuning arguments. Um, however, the flaw in them that I'm interested in, so far as Professor Craig's God is concerned, is the fact that they are completely useless, <laughs> so far as establishing the moral properties of the creator in question. That is not to concede that they are good arguments. Of course it isn't. 
And Professor Craig was pulling a fast one when he suggested that I was somehow just conceding that there is a God and that he, that he had established that. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't conceding that at all. I was merely restricting the debate to his particular God and focusing on the fact that the argument that he presented, the first argument, gave us no grounds whatsoever for supposing that this creator, if he exists, is all good, any more than it gives us grounds for supposing that it's all evil. Bill, do you want to respond? Well, I would say in response to that, that since we both agree that the cosmological argument, my first argument, doesn't even attempt to establish the moral properties of the creator, that means the problem of evil is irrelevant with respect to it. It doesn't offer any refutation of it. And that was what I meant when I said you tacitly concede that there is a creator of the universe in a debate context because you don't refute it. I mean, in a, in a debate context, to refuse to address and engage with an argument is to tacitly admit it. Now, obviously, I don't think you personally believe that there's a creator of the universe, but I'm, I'm trying to goad you into responding <laughs> to the argument. Why don't you believe that there yeah, is well, a creator? Yeah, well, I know, and, I, and I, of course. Notice what Craig has just admitted. Of course, I don't think you personally believe in a personal creator of the universe. This marks his assertions of before as insincere. He then tries to justify his strategy by saying, I'm trying to goad you into responding to the argument. Of course, if Craig really just wished to hear Law engage the argument, he could have explicitly asked him to do so in the after-debate dialogue, as he just has, or even during the debate itself. That he instead went with this contorted route indicates he was trying to score some points in his favor by knowingly attributing to law a position that was not his. Days after this happened, Craig wrote on his website an essay with his thoughts about the debate and, once again, he distorted Stephen Law's views. First, quote, in the debate, Law made the remarkable claim that the cosmological argument and the teleological argument aren't part of a cumulative case for theism, end quote. Lies! The boy lies! This is false. Law just said they form an equally cumulative case for a good god and an evil god, a point relevant to the problem of evil that exclusively aims to prove the existence of an all-good God. This is something Law and Craig talked about in the after-debate dialogue they had. We came here today to talk about Professor Craig's God, right? a very specific kind of God, and I just bracketed the argument because uh, it's irrelevant so far as establishing that there's a good God rather than, say, an evil god. It's just neutral on the moral properties, as, as, as you yourself have, have conceded. Yes, so and, I just put it to one side. Rather than see that as a deficiency of the argument, I find that to be an attractive feature of the argument because of its modesty. It doesn't try to prove all of the attributes of God. It gives us the ones that I mentioned, personal, enormously powerful, timeless, spaceless, uh, immaterial, transcendent cause of the universe, but it doesn't address the moral issues. So that's why I see it as part of a cumulative case, yes, as you know, where I'll, I'll yeah, supplement but it's actually, it. It provides no cumulative content at all, so far as establishing that there's a good God as opposed to a not, not that. Well, it establishes that there is a personal creator who has these yeah, properties, but, no but it doesn't address the moral. But no cumulative whatsoever, so far as settling that issue. Is not as far as the moral so, is concerned. I mean, what so often happens is in these situations. Second instance of a misrepresentation. Quote, so what argument does the natural theologian give for thinking the creator-designer is good? Here, Law mistakenly seems to believe the theist arrives to the conclusion that the creator-designer is good by an inductive survey of the world's events, end quote. When will the lies end? Law does not believe that. This is a point Craig himself raised in the debate and to which... Law replied. I think Dr. Law's mistake is that he thinks that the theist arrives at the doctrine of God's goodness by an inductive survey of the world's events, and that's simply incorrect. As Michael Bergman and Jeff Brower point out in their response to Dr. Law, 
traditional theists have never argued for God's perfect goodness by simply inferring it from the existence of some good in the world. Rather, what the theist can do is to present a moral argument, such as I have done, for God as the foundation of objective moral values. To me, first of all, Professor Craig seemed to be suggesting that I think Christians think God is good because you know, they draw that conclusion on the basis of what they see of the world around them. Well, obviously, that's, <laughs> I don't believe that. Um, he's, he's attacking a straw man at that point. I assume that Christians have some other reasons for thinking that God is good, because it's pretty, it's pretty obvious from what we see of the world around us that it really does not support that belief. That's certainly not why I think that Christians believe that God is good, not at all. So that, that, that was just an attack on a straw man. It's not my position, very obviously. Um, that will be all. See you next time.